Okay, so, uh, so you remember that for f to have a critical point, the y coordinate of f prime has to be zero or undefined. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you thought I gotta go find f prime. So you use the product rule and just read exactly what you got, Cambria. X minus three to the fourth times five times x plus two to the fourth. Plus x plus two to the fifth times four times x x minus 3 to the third. Like that? Yeah. Good. Does anyone need me to show more detail? You just have to wait on me or something and I'll show more. So you're good to there. Um, we need to figure out when f prime is equal to 0, which is hard unless f prime is factored. So we do want to try and factor. So the first thought you should have is, when you look at that blue expression for f prime, is it easiest to describe that as factors or as terms? So describe, so when I say that, that means you've got to tell me, how would you describe that as factors? Like x minus 3 times x minus 3 times 5 times x minus 3 times 5 times x plus 3 times 5 times x plus 3 times like four times. Keep going. Plus. Stop right there. Oh, so that's a term and that's a term. There we go. Yeah. No worries. It's, you're, you're doing exactly what I would want you to do. Uh, you're like saying, you're thinking, okay, well, you know, I've got a factor, four factors here, factor here, five, you know, four more factors here, but as soon as you say plus, no longer factor. Is that okay? Yeah. It's perfect. So to me, it's easiest to describe that prime as simply two terms. That's how I want you to see f prime. So if f prime is two terms, that means there's a possibility we can factor each term. Yeah. Like we can factor something out of each term. So what factor can be taken from each term, Cambria? x minus 3 to the third. Is 4 a factor of the first term? Oh, no, no, no. Good answer. So we can't pull out a 4. Does that make sense? Perfect. So when we factor these two factors from the first term, what factor remains? X minus 3, 5, and So you say X minus 3 times 5. Times 1. Times 1, technically. That's well done. And we have plus. Uh -huh. Pause there. Cambry is talking. She's earning the ticket. But does anyone want me to talk? Good job, Ella. Thank you. Does anyone want me to talk more about this? Keep going. X plus three times five times x plus two times one. Perfect. Scott Burrell, please call me in office. This is Scott Burrell. So now, what do you want to do? What I did is I distributed it in, like in the parentheses, so it's like five x minus fifteen. Okay, you're doing the perfect thing. Just want to make sure that you don't ever in this class do something without a reason. Sometimes the reason is simply a rule, but there's got to be a reason. It can't be just I think this is right. It's like no, there's got to be a reason. If you do things that you think are right, it's usually wrong. <laughs> yeah. So why does distributing seem like it would be a good thing? Yeah, if I distribute, I'm going to be able to put terms together. Yeah. Mike, please. I might have missed something, but so if, if you're multiplying everything outside the parentheses by everything inside the parentheses, then wouldn't you end up with just a ton of repeated x minus 3 to the thirds, and like 5x minus 3 to the thirds, and then 1 x minus 3 to the third, and then x minus 3 to the third, x plus 2 to the fourth, kind of thing, where it's like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, for both of the groupings of parentheses outside of the big parentheses are multiplied by every factor for every term? Oh, I think, okay, I'm not sure, but I think this is the mistake you're making. So I want to try something, if it doesn't help you keep talking. Uh, if you have this. Brittany, 
Eldwork. Please call the main office, Brittany Eldwork. And you distribute. Like, don't do this stuff inside the parentheses first, because you really don't have to. What would be the distributed version? That's okay. Um, when we distribute, all we are doing is multiplying. So all we're doing is taking 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So you don't do it multiple times. I'm not sure if that's what you meant, but I thought that's what you meant. So it'd be like 2 and 3 times 4 and 2 and 3 times 5? No. It's just 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Like you don't do repeated multiplication. It's just that. Like those two are the same. You don't do what you're thinking, which is two times three times four plus two times three times five. You don't do that. Does that make yeah. sense? Like let's just test it. What's four times five, Mike? Like plus one? So this would be 21, this would be, Are you wanting me to say yeah, yeah, you're good, six. that's the worst bracket ever, uh, that's a little harder, but you can probably do it, what's 6 times 21? Uh, 126. Nice, you've done it faster than me, not that that's any great feat, because I'm no great master of arithmetic, I'll just turn the bottom. Two times, how, what is this going to become? Uh, 60 plus 6, or no. Uh, 120 plus 6, not 60. So those are the same. Okay. Did that answer your question? Kind of, yeah. Somebody's still bothering you then. I don't know what exactly. It's the fact that like there's two two parentheses numbers outside of the big parentheses. Um, it doesn't really matter because it's all multiplication. There's no addition. It's just multiplication. It's like try this one. You've got a h cubed times b to the fourth multiplied by a multiplied by five. Can you see why that's the same thing that we have? Okay. That's this line here. Do you see it? Yeah. Good. Plus uh, 4B. Do that. Yeah. So when we distribute, we are just taking this times this. Also, it's really one. It's one big thing. So when this gets multiplied by this, what's the result? So it'd be a to the fourth, well, five a to the fourth, and a to the fourth. That makes sense? Yeah. And that's exactly what we started with here. Okay, I see that. Does that feel better? Yeah. Good work. That, see, that helped you too, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, Ashley was having, like, fair. Like, Ashley was like, hey, Mike, thank you for the question. <laughs> She's like, I don't really see it either. <laughs> fair, right? Like Is that better? Someone. Good, good, good. Yeah. No, look. <laughs> it's why I just keep telling you. you. You can't just watch me. You have to understand what I'm talking about. And if I were a better teacher, I would somehow be able to see inside Ashley's head and go, I know why she's confused and I could just help. That's facetious to say I could never do that, right? Yeah. So my only way to help you is to try and do everything I can to make you comfortable with talking. Is that fair? Yeah. Because then you can just talk about anything. Um, like, really think about this. Look, you want to learn something? Find somebody who knows it. And I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I know it pretty well. Find somebody who knows it pretty well, and then just be comfortable just talking with them. You can learn so much faster than like YouTube or a book or anything. Because you just keep asking them. 
And if they're, and I hope I'm patient, I just keep going, oh no, just keep talking, we'll figure it out, you know. Like I tried this and he's like, well, kinda, let's try something else. So, we good? Yeah, that worked great, thank you. Perfect, let me erase this. What I kind of want to help you understand, Mike, and everybody else, is, okay, the whole world has this idea that math is complicated, confusing, frustrating. And the reason they're frustrated is because they won't go back to the basics. Like, I didn't show you anything complicated. I just showed you something very basic. If you can see it in a basic sense, you can apply it to something more complicated. It really isn't nearly as bad as you think. Guaranteed. I had a student who, uh, her name is Oakley Whiting. She gets to be on the video. I don't know, eight years ago or something. She, uh, she, was, she was here all the time working on it. But for her, it just never really clicked completely. So I wish she hadn't, but she elected not to take the AP tabs. So I have no idea how she would have done. But what was amazing is she went to Utah State she had to take math 1050, which is college algebra. And she like got an A, she was tutoring other people. Her parents were like, they were shocked. They're like, Oakley doesn't know math. Okay, so she took calculus and was able to succeed wildly in algebra. Why? Because she learned how to learn. She learned that like, oh, I don't have, I don't know, just keep doing it. Okay, cool, bad story. Didn't really tell it very well. Um, here we go. Oh, we got to distribute. Yeah. Talk camera. Five X minus fifteen. Ah, I would do that. <laughs> Keep going, camera. Plus work plus eight. Keep going, camera. And I combine, so so it's like nine X minus. All you have to ask yourself is this back to basics again. When you see all that, do you see terms or factors? Good. Terms can add in any order you'd like. No. That's your question? Yes. yes, see? It's simple. It really, if you just learn to see what's in front of you in a way that you maybe haven't seen before, it's like suddenly like, oh my gosh, why was this hard? <laughs> fair? Good. So what do we got? Uh, all that. Yeah, fair, I like that. I hate repeating it myself. <laughs> so you're good. I'll just write it out. You're good now. And then this would be? So do you know the answer to the question? And what are the critical points about? Because if I were to put a three here, here and here, which of the three factors would equal zero? The first, second, or third? First. First. But once the first equals zero, who cares about the others? Because they're multiplied. Yeah. So what other x value can we have? Negative. For a similar reason. The last one's a little hard, but you should be able to tell me. Okay, pause. I have a huge hint for the whole room. Everybody look up. Everybody look up. Okay, I've noticed with many students that when I say what are the values of x which will cause f prime to equal zero, literally no one has trouble with these two. It's zero. No. no one has trouble with those two. They have trouble with the third one. Here's why. You've got to get the right balance between doing things in your head versus on paper. And that last one should be done on paper. So what are you thinking when you look at the last one? Just tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you think before that. I mean something that multiplies by nine to get seven. Perfect. So don't do it in your head. Write it down. You need nine times something to be seven. There you go. I, I feel like that last time I was in here, you did the same thing. It's okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's good work. Mike, question? No, I was, just, I was just trying to answer it. Anybody else have a question here? 
Perfect.